Hey guys, you're listening to the Wise Words Book Club, where we scale down some of the best non-fiction books and we give you their key ideas. We teach you how to apply them to the real world and how to benefit from them. So if you're looking to improve or looking to grow, then why not listen to some wise words? Words that make you wise. Right, so what game are you playing? Um, when did you read this, mate? Fuck, I don't know. It's so long ago now. Um, yeah, I mean, it must have been the same for me. I think it was the last time I went to France. So it actually could have been January, as weird as it sounds for me. It was it, like, I remember reading it on my Kindle because I remember making the notes on the Kindle. It's not, it's, it's not a long book, is it? No, not at all. And it's, yeah, it, that's what's quite nice about it is that you can kind of blitz through it. It's just like easy reading. Like it's not a hard yeah. one to get your head around. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, and like, I talk about this stuff quite a lot anyway, but it's kind of nice to see it in like sort of almost different wording mm-hmm. or different like frame that someone is coming to it. Sure. You know, you read about this stuff all the time, especially with like, Especially you self-help. Know. Well, yeah, because it is, it is exactly self-help. And any person like Gary V or all these kinds of people, yeah. they're like, follow what you want to do. You know, you just yeah. hear it, but it's like in different wording. I think, I, I honestly think this one's kind of more helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my head. Yeah. So like this idea of like finding your passion or finding what you really care about and like finding your values is, is quite daunting because you don't really know to start. But what, the way she frames it is as a game. So like, what game are you playing? Yeah. And obviously... I think the reason why she chose the metaphor is because with games you're you're keeping score. Yeah, there has yeah, to be yeah. a winner and a loser, and it's and I think her main point is mainly about like what are you measuring in your game that you're going for. Yeah, um, and I think that her main thesis is like obviously it's in the title. So what game are you playing? It's like you need to diagnose the game that you are currently playing. Yeah, and really figure out if that's one that you want to. Or yeah. fine, is it a game that you came up with yourself, or is it a game that somebody else has given you? So ha- yeah. is it a game that your parents are giving you such as like, oh, they really want you to go to university maybe, or they really want you to do this in your life. So is that, that their game they gave you? Or is it a friend's game? That's because you didn't have any other bit like what we were talking about today. Like you don't know what you want, do you? So you, ch- you look at other people to decide what yeah. you want. And it's not just one person. It's like you're the game that you kind of follow. If unless it's your game is built up of and made up of everyone else around you. Like so many people yeah. have an input on like what you should do or what's right for you. Like, yeah exactly yeah the, i mean the insight was like we always passively absorb these messages about how life should be um and then we and then her point was like we then we design our lives to to like meet others expectations yeah and like in just not even just that like at home but at work um and we all try to live the successful life we have taught to think of as a successful life like yeah i mean the way i look at it is anything that's mainstream success is the game that the society wants you to play yeah. but also it depends on like like for instance, you know, we live in a capitalistic society, and so money is basically at the crux of anything. So mm-hmm. if you have money, you are successful. You yeah. know, and it's that's one way. It's almost it. it's almost like success equals money to a degree. Yeah, well, I think that yeah. is like is is shown to us at a young age. Like I don't know, in movies, rich, successful people. I think it's so unhealthy, but um, well, that's but yeah, this is this is kind of the point of the book. Like we've all been pre-programmed to be, or sorry, conditioned to think of success as in terms of monetary standard and her main point is like why should that be them like why should you want to have money in the first place like money is never something it's not an end goal itself because at the end of the day money is just something you can transfer transform yeah. sorry into something else so it's not it like be a byproduct of the thing you want to do for sure yeah yeah and like money doesn't make you happy i mean like, this is i mean there's there's an argument that fine on money up to a certain point does make you happy like if you're shit poor you're going to be unhappy it's like but past a certain extent money doesn't make you happy and like it gets repeated all the time but like why do we still then chase it because obviously then it's it's not even a level of money it's a level of social status and showing off to other people that you're successful so yeah um so yeah i thought that was really interesting how she she basically easily sort of frames it in this idea of a game yeah Um, simplify uh, simplified it so that way everyone can kind of understand it yeah, and it's it's funny because she talks about the conditioning where like, mm. um, we we actually get scared when we step outside of our sort of what. So basically, we've obviously through life we've met loads of different people and we sort of set up some implicit rules of the ways we're going to behave. And it's quite interesting how she talks about how we get uncomfortable when we sort of behave a different way, or yeah, if we're scared to do something new because it might make somebody angry with us or somebody might get a bit yeah. uncomfortable with us because we're behaving differently for example like let's say you've worked from a nine-to-five job all your life and you suddenly turn around and go, right that's it fuck it i know set up a, a vineyard 
okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. and your friends are just looking at you like what, the, what are you doing what are you doing and they'd be really scared and i find that really interesting because that's the whole point of like we've all been conditioned to live like with this status or oh, sorry not status like static life like our life can't really change that much it should always be very similar um well if you think about it it's 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 novelty at the end of the day everyone is experiencing this and then if if i do something new and i don't know how everyone in my kind of circle is going to react then the safe option is to do something that they all know how i'm going to react do you know what i mean sure we're, we're, we're scared of ostracization right it, well, exactly and so and but because everyone is doing that almost no one's speaking up about it no one's doing the thing that they want to do because they yeah, all feel agrees. like oh, shit we can't I find it I find it mad in this in this society as well like that you can't actually have ambitious goals like (laughs) if you were like somebody I want to be shit hot rich by 30 I want to be you know self not self-made I want to be a millionaire I want to do this people just look at you like you're crazy I don't know I just feel like we've also we're conditioned by a group to like not want to achieve to settle almost well like what I find funny is is a lot of this stuff is not actually said as in like for, uh, to give an example, right, I do acting, and acting is not the most, you know, sustainable job, it's not consistent, realistically, the top 0.5% actually make it. But I, And there's always been this, like, stigma that, oh, so many people will shoot me down, like, how many times have you heard of an actor that, like, so many people said I couldn't do it, and I did it, you know, that kind of thing. But weirdly enough, I haven't actually come across a lot of that. Maybe that's just my circle, but, like, a lot of people, they don't, they're not re- a lot of people don't really shoot your dreams down unless you start to make it and then people get jealous but a lot <laughs> of the time it's like true, right yeah it, and so it, there's kind of this thing that like oh people are going to shoot you down if you start doing what you want to do but actually a lot of people i've i find that a lot of people don't and and so no one actually speaks up about it but there's this thing in the air that like oh if i do then someone will tell me off so it's, yeah. it's kind of weird, like that kind of feeling looming over you, but it doesn't actually happen. Interesting. I think, what do you mean? So like people would be less receptive of you actually taking steps towards your dream if it actually manifests. So what I mean by that is you can have really like world, world goals, right? But nobody actually gets upset until you actually start achieving them. And they're like, actually, wait, hang on a second. Yeah. My life's here and I didn't try because I thought I'd settle. And exactly. now he's doing it. Yeah exactly there's this like hesitancy like obviously i know about oh gosh you know um a lot of actors don't make it but I've, i haven't actually found someone to like speak up maybe that means that i haven't made it yet oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no exactly what you were saying i think people get envious when others actually do what they want to do and they start succeeding at it and then it puts them in this position like fuck you know i didn't actually do what i wanted to do and i'm still doing something that i don't want to do you know yeah it was it, she talked about in the book similar as well as like change is difficult but not just for you so you will freak out when you're doing something a bit different but other yeah. people will freak out when you do stuff a bit different or like if you're having wild success that will freak them out because they have to update their version of what they think yeah. what you are i think that's yeah. i mean i don't want to go down that route because i think it's off topic for the book but this idea that like people don't like it when people when they can't categorize you anymore when you've changed from the person they used to see you as like if you look back at all our school friends and stuff yeah, and, like, i think yeah, what they're doing now is just like I, I, I find it quite intriguing I, i'm curious yeah. more than anything but um yeah I, I find it weird how somebody could yeah they, they don't like the change of somebody else they, they they thought they figured you out and they don't like the fact they haven't yeah um yeah um so moving on from that mate i've got this the next we were talking about defining your success so um I, I quite like this i mean there's no real way of actually defining what success looks like to you apart from trying to sort of, I think one of her main things was she tried a load of different things. I think she was also married, wasn't she? And then she got divorced and yeah. found out she had a massive love for traveling. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like changed her job so that she could um, travel more. I think she turned down a promotion so that yes. she could travel more. Travel more. Exactly. But this is kind of what she means by the de- defining your success is like, instead of just monetary terms, like obviously everybody else it's very easy to define success by monetary terms. Cause that's what everybody else does. Yeah. But defining success on your own terms is actually quite hard because it requires finding out what you enjoy doing. Yeah. And what's that require? It requires actually going out and doing a lot of different things and yeah. working out like, Oh, I really like this or, you know, just picking a hobby and doing it. Um, yeah. But I quite liked how she sort of designed her life around the fact that she enjoyed traveling. So she worked for a company where it evolved going to multiple different countries. And um, and like you said, she she turned down a promotion because she knew her values were 
success for her was traveling a lot. And if she yeah. took the promotion, she might have been getting more money, but she would have been working in the same place. And that wasn't... Um... But that, I, I think for me, this is like the, the confidence it gives you when you actually know what success is on your terms and how you're measuring yeah. your own life. Um, I think like a big part was... Well, she she said something about um, if you take away everything, like if you take everything out of the equation, so money doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, and just ask yourself what you want to do. I think she even said something about like, which I resonated with a lot. It was like, when you walk into a bookshop, which books do you go to? You know, it's like, which books do you, are you like so intrigued uh, about? What like, do you gravitate non- towards? Yeah. Yeah, like sort of nonfiction wise. And <laughs> weirdly enough it's kind of like some subconscious kind of attraction but it basically means like take everything aside and just ask yourself what you actually like you know don't take into consideration someone else and what they feel or your parents and what mm. they feel or like the logistics of it, everything because those things can happen later then you can fit those around the thing that you're defining you know but um i think yeah once you've figured out like you said defining your success and what that actually means to you then you're already like in the right direction you know i think yeah i think um yeah similar to what you're what you're saying it's like uh, the question you should ask yourself is in my free time i mean to honest the sad thing is actually this day and age if you ask somebody what in your free time do you gravitate towards it probably is netflix or you know but that's because they lack any sort of goals yeah if you kind of get me you lack you lack um Sure, it's not, it's not even <laughs> there's it. clearly someone who is listening to this right now who's got netflix like open on their tv <laughs> <laughs> no but in my head like fine there's a time and a place for it but if you find yourself gravitating yeah. towards entertainment every time you're not got something to do it does mean you're not really there's nothing else in your life outside of work that you're focusing on yeah like projects yeah um that's like so i think the main point would be fine let's just hypothetically say you you're not really i mean maybe you find you love me Maybe gaming could be another alternative that people actually want to be a professional gamer. Fuck it, I don't know. Anyway, not to shoot down those dreams. It's like whatever you gravitate towards in terms of hobbies that you like doing, whether it's sport or something, try and design a life around where that gets more, you get more time to do what you want. Yeah, and you're that improving it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's another motivation, isn't it? Like progress, feeling progress in what you're doing. Because the thing is, like you could you could potentially be watching Netflix, but if you're watching Netflix in a lens of like, oh, you're a film producer or you're a yeah. director, then it's different. You know, you are literally working at a skill. The same thing with like, you know, playing a sport and you're, you're just trying to get better at it. Um, sure. So it's like everything can be defined in a way, but you've got to be actively going towards that definition and actively going towards that goal. Because um, so many things are like escapism. You know, I could go and watch TV. I could spend hours on Instagram or uh, what are people uh, like TikTok and things like that. You know, but it's it's brain numbing unless you have an a kind of goal behind it. If you get what I mean, yeah, for sure, an agenda. I think I think it's quite interesting as well because she started going into as well moving on. It's like the games other people play. So like, mm. so she had the power of money, which yep. is classic. That's probably the most popular game I would have said, especially. I was about to say especially for males, but it's not that's not a hundred percent true. But it 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 kind of is like the status um sort of signalling and trying well, to go the after the best jobs. Um I quite I found this one quite interesting, the security one. So like some people try to play the game of coming indispensable so in an in an aim to make sure they're not like fireable. So they aim mm. to become somebody that is basically that's somebody who's after security is just after a stable life. Um which is quite interesting. And and then yeah. The interesting one was the zero sum games, which I think a lot of people get trapped in. Like the game of making the most money in the company is what she was saying. But that's basically saying like the game of trying to get to CEO of a company because it's zero yeah. sum. There can only be one. Yeah. Um, and the moment you set that as your site, you're going to be in for a pain because it's hard to get there. Yeah. I was going to say like that kind of ties into um, the molecule of more like the dopamine thing is like you're constantly going for the next thing, but you never get there because you've always got a next another step to go to you're never sure. satisfied because this isn't like the game you really really want to be playing it means that you're never like satisfied in the moment and so you're constantly searching for the next thing yeah well they also don't have clarity on what it is they want because they think they want to be the make the most money in the company right yeah and then when they get there like we said before money doesn't make happiness so like anything that's money or power orientated these things can easily be lost 
um stuff like traveling that isn't something you can lose that easily if you kind of get me it's like your memories your me- yeah exactly exactly um whereas the, the money thing can come and go the the status can come and go yeah um I think it's interesting that she's talking about like the idea of being a pawn in somebody else's game. If so, like if you don't define the rules of your own mm. game, you want to play, you are always going to be a pawn to somebody else's. Yeah, that's cool. You, actually. Yeah, because if you're if you're playing and chasing the most money, you become a pawn of the company. Yeah, who's, yeah, who's yeah. Give you that. Um, so like she was talking about how the the level you have to be way more calmer and have way more clarity when you know exactly it is what you want. Yeah, and I'm not saying this is an easy decision because I could even argue that I don't even know still know what I want. But at least I'm but trying none to of them it out. are easy decisions. Like yeah. these things don't just like happen overnight, and mm-hmm. it does take. Like if you are surrounded by a thousand people, you know, and like ninety percent of them are all following this this game, it's quite hard to not conform. You know, mm-hmm. it like literally social conformity comes first to truth. You know, yep. truth comes second to social conformity. And so it is it's it is hard, like no doubt about it. But I think once you're on your track and you feel that level of like confidence, that level of kind of feedback that you get from it, that you're actually enjoying it, then I think that almost like ingrains it and strengthens it. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it's interesting, actually, if I, if I did evaluate my, my own personal choices recently in terms of setting up my own company, I would say... I, I am actually playing my own game of I, I decided freedom as my key mm. value and that yeah. I was going to build my life around having freedom. So that involves being my own boss because if I'm my own boss, it means I can, I, first of all, I live and die by my own sword, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> and also at the same time, I can choose whether or not I want to go on holiday. I can choose when I want to do something. I can choose to be honest, if I got up tomorrow morning, I was like, do you know what? Don't feel like working today. And I could not yeah. work. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause I remember you like when you were working, um, in Bristol for up you the go. company, yeah. Um, and like you just said, like you are the pawn in someone else's game. You always are told what to do, or your work is delegated to you, all that kind of stuff. But you have control of your own life as soon as you start to do what you want to do. Yeah, I mean, and to honest, you can even still be working for a company and have control yeah, yeah, yeah. as long as you set it on your own terms. Like, yeah. what it is you want to be doing, and and then and also be willing to walk away when you're not playing by your rules, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but always, but at least when you know your the def- definition of your success and what you're measuring it by, maybe it's a four day work week. You can go find somewhere else where you can work four days. Yeah. So, and you're not constrained, but it also helps you filter out opportunities because the moment you know what you want, you can then say goodbye to a lot of it. I yeah. mean, aren't you, this, I, I was just thinking about this actually. It's quite hypothetical thinking because in this right now with Corona and stuff, everybody be lucky to have a job. Yeah. So it's kind of wishful thinking, but it should always be at the back of your mind. Like when you get the next opportunity, or in your free time, develop skills that would help you get to where you want to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk about now the, like the people projecting their games. Cause I thought that was quite interesting. How no matter what I actually, I'm convinced it happens with everything. People project their own standards onto everybody else. Yeah. I mean, a classic example actually would be like, let's just say you did something and they'd be like, Oh, why'd you do it that way? That's their way of projecting the way they yeah. do things onto you. And I would say that's the same as when they say, let's just say you were like, oh, I turned down my promotion. Most people would not be able to understand it because they're too busy thinking of the game of make the most money yeah, or yeah. get to the highest uh, position. Yeah. And I think that's really interesting because you can see people's revealed preferences by the way they treat you. Well, I think you said something uh, quite good before uh, where you said they see, they judge everything through their lens. Yeah. Yeah, true. And just like I judge everything through my lens as well, yeah. true. Like, like, I can't understand people who would want to just always work for somebody throughout their whole life because I would never want that. But that's me projecting onto them, right? So this yeah. is my game I'm playing. Yeah, this yeah. is what I mean by it. It's, um, it's person dependent. Yeah. But it's what I think the main point is actually more that most people have the same game. <laughs> and when you're all playing the same game, it's hyper competitive. Um, and you're all trying to one up each other. And it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's, it, but this is it. It's like, you know, if you're in a, a climate or an environment that is always competitive mm-hmm. and it's always like, like, obviously, there's nothing wrong with competition, but if it's always competitive and it just sucks you into playing all the same game and being so yeah. competitive for money, then it's like, you know, it's, it's hard to step out. She made an interesting insight saying, like, what if you change from the default mode, which is like, money orientated position orientated like work your way up earn a lot of money you know have a cool have a nice family 
Um, she said, when you see, you'll see how many people operate under this, uh, the same common assumptions yeah. because they'll be so confused by the way when you present yourself afterwards or the way yeah. you change the way you operate, they'll be like, hang on a second, why are you doing that? Um, basically, if you're sticking out in terms of life decisions you're making, most people will be confused. <laughs> um, yeah, which is kind of sad because it's yeah. like, it doesn't promote individuality or authenticity. The thing is, is that like, it technically it's also not their fault either because they are also conditioned into this way of thinking well they haven't been able to question it or thought yeah about exactly it. they can't they haven't seen any other option so now that you're the only option you look like oh it's like jarring it's like oh why are you doing that why aren't you doing it this way like we're all doing it um, especially as you said if you actually become successful or like you're happy to people actually don't like other people being happy to a degree if they're yeah. unhappy that is they're always comparing like oh why is this guy so smiley <laughs> well, it's like, all in comparison to them it's like true if i'm not if i'm not happy then why are they happy i've been doing <laughs> what the are they doing thing. differently what yeah. are they doing differently yeah and then when you ask them they tell you something like oh i quit my job they'll be like what <laughs> how, did, <laughs> how did that make yeah. me happy yeah Wasn't it's it like stressful? um uh what's that scene in like wolf of wall street where he's like you show me your your uh, pay slip for last month, and I'll and I'll quit um, my job right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And he goes and he goes and calls right straight. Yeah, he's that. like, yeah, yeah. hey, That's how you cool doing? Scene. Yeah, all good. Yeah, I'm. Uh, by the way, I quit. <laughs> That's a cool scene. I, I mean, it. everybody wishes that sort of just fell in their lap. But then yeah. also, that is also another thing based on uh, money. Yeah, like, no, it is. Based it on is. Money. It is. So don't um, follow Donny. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Donny, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm convinced. Um, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. I, so I, after reading this book, I didn't walk away with many um, sort of like hints at what a good game to play would be because mm-hmm. I don't think there is like a right answer. Right, this is back to what I was saying yeah, a second exactly. here, which is you kind of got to find what's right for you. Yeah. I personally no one else like is going to know what you. No one else is going to know yeah. what your game is or what yeah. the thing that you're you're defining as success. Yeah, um, yeah it's got to be very like your own opinion, your own choice. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, the way I would see it as well is kind of like, especially when you're younger, like, of course, you've got to look at other people to define what game you think's worth playing. Because I guess in a, in a way, it slims down the choices. Because if everything was worth playing, you nothing would be worthwhile. So we need to have like a common goal as a group, if you kind of get me. We need we need each other to be put ourselves on the straight and narrow. Like, this is something that we should be going after. But once, once you get older, you kind of learn your own sort of like uh, interests. Like, for example, with you, like now realizing that you might want to go do a degree. Yeah. You are much. You're in a much better space now than you were when you were what eighteen to decide yeah. that because well, you tried a few things. Yeah, exactly. And it's quite interesting because this uh, that's a perfect example in terms of like most people go to uni from what eighteen to twenty one, and it's yeah, because they have because they have to, and it's, it's a common yeah, goal, right? It's like exactly. what's told of them, what's expected. They're told to go to uni. They're told mm-hmm. to study something, like forced to study something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like I've done full circle and like come to realize what i actually like and that's what i want to study now but but can you imagine how much more effective your studying is going to be when you know you like it well, yeah exactly <laughs> think about how many people at uni that don't actually like what they're studying or aren't i'm, actually con- I'm convinced the people who were best at school who were like um doing really really well actually loved the subject they were yeah. studying we, we yeah, called yeah. them nerds but in hindsight i wish i was a fucking nerd because yeah, they were probably would... loving every day of school they were oh, probably we're, loving... we're nerds now, so yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> but it is it is that like people can judge you through that lens and be like, "Well, who goes to uni at twenty four? You know, that's pretty late. You should be getting a yeah. job." Oh, mate, I think I think you, just, you just summed it up by the way. The word "should." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Should it's like and and think about how like there's this format of like okay, you go you go to uni, you get out, you get a job by like. 28 to 32 you get in a relationship you have a family and that's it and you don't and once you're in like because thing is logistics are harder to get around like you can ignore other people and their opinions but it's like if you're broke poor and you want to do something it is much harder so if you have a family and you have kids it's much harder to do the thing that you want to do than if you'd started when younger obviously there it there are always ways around this so if anyone's listening to this and they want to change of course there's ways to change um but yeah it's just i mean uh, you are limited of course but um, yeah i mean the fact i just i think most people don't even question or even think about change which is sad and they wonder why if they're unhappy like like what what was it like was it einstein who said like insanity's just doing the same thing again and again expecting a different result like if you're unhappy you need to change like there needs to be a change in your life otherwise you're not like you don't get out of unhappiness by staying the same do you yeah 
but that's uh, so that actually that makes a lot of sense in terms of why people do ha- have this like aspect of escapism they do go on tiktok for hours they do go on instagram change on from TV. their normal reality it, right? because it's it's brain numbing it's like gosh i don't I, you know i've just been stuck at my job for eight hours yeah. I, i'd actually say it's changed from their own mind because for example if you leave yourself this is like what meditation is if you leave yourself to your own thoughts your own thoughts could be pretty depressing well, yeah, exactly. it's comparing you to what you should be doing like oh you should be doing this right now or you you yeah. should have done that like your brain immediately goes into default like sort of almost negative mode for most people yeah um or like it looks back at like a previous event and like analyzes it but not in a very nice way because for some reason we like to analyze everything negatively to yeah, a degree first. not everybody um, and the, I, I almost would say escapism off the topic of this book is a, is a way of stopping your brain from thinking these negative thoughts by keeping it occupied. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, absolutely. like continuously occupied. So you don't feel those, those feelings. It's kind of like weird, actually, like a couple of years ago, well, I used to watch Netflix all the time, but mm-hmm. I just don't fancy watching TV most of the no, time not now. At all. Like I, not at all. I'm not even interested in watching TV. It's just it doesn't. It's but nowhere I, near. In fact, I don't even have my TV with me anymore. But I think that um, almost comes from a level of being busy as well. Like you always have stuff yeah. to do, right? So, but it's yeah. like once once you once you start doing the thing that you like, then it's above the thing that you can relax and do. Like obviously, I watch a film now and then, if, especially if I'm like tired or whatever, yeah. and I don't have like the mental capacity to actually pursue something i want to do but when you do when you do have that like energy then you kind of want to do that more you, want, sure. you want to do that over watching a um, blockbuster film hangover film you know? yeah no 100 percent, mate 100 percent. i i told you yeah i i know the feels i sometimes rarely only when i'm like you when i'm like my brain's kind of fried it's normally on a hangover <laughs> yeah true also yeah. very true um now where are we brains brains worry i got to mate so i'm thinking like i like this idea of like judgment guilt and shame as tools of um social ostracization Mm. i don't know if i'm saying right to get people to do the expected um so her point was like judgment guilt and shame are used to make sure people have the appropriate clothes date the appropriate people live in the right neighborhood driving the right kind of car and those rules those are set by your immediate circle if you kind of get me which i find quite interesting if you, if you get me, the judgment, guilt, and shame yeah, are yeah, used yeah, to tell you what you should do, but you're only influenced by the people in your near circle. Because if you went somewhere else, they would probably they wouldn't know you enough to shame you. Yeah. So it's actually they're almost used as tools by people who are closer to you to reduce your attempts to do stuff to keep you in line. Yeah. Because yeah. think about it, you wouldn't use uh, judgment, guilt, and shame when you just met somebody for the first time, unless of course yeah. you're just like, not a psychopath, but you know, you just unless you're not a very nice person. So actually the idea of being kept in line is actually much more close to home, which is, which is also an interesting idea. I just realized that while, while reading that, that the people most likely to keep you down are the ones closest. Yeah. Well, because that's your group that you're in and, and it's like, you're, you feel more comfortable if there's someone else that thinks like you, but then as soon as you're, you have a change of thought that doesn't, isn't the same in your group. Mm-hmm. then you feel like pressure to not not expose that not actually express that you know sure. if you want to start wearing different clothes or, uh, i get you you know like it's outside uh, of your yeah, circle yeah, yeah. Um, it's all a way to fit in but the thing, is, the thing is is that like the the core of that should be that you should feel comfortable to be who you are and that you that real friends or real people around you and the people that you surround yourself with should be accommodating to that and they should like welcome that you know that's what good mates or good like a good family does they accept yeah. the fact that you are pursuing something that you want to do yeah no it's true I, to honest, I haven't really i haven't had it yet but i can imagine but i think actually maybe it's more it's not your close friends i would assume it's more like weak ties that try and hold you back yeah like but then that, the, yeah but then those people shouldn't even like come shouldn't even into have a Shouldn't even have thoughts opinion. about like you know stopping you from doing something true do i don't know i don't think it depends um I, th- I think you're gonna like the next part mate if you look at the when we notice pay attention because this is all about like novelty mm. um and like we noted things that are against the conditioned expectations so like your mate who always wears i don't know a suit turns up yeah. in trackies yeah, um, yeah, yeah you're gonna be a bit confused <laughs> yeah. um and i love it how that this idea that your your brain literally needs to when it's like novel information your brain very quickly needs to figure out whether it's a threat yeah 
or what what like what what it basically needs to find an answer to it because your brain actually walks oh what was it? it was really interesting i don't know it was divided brain but it was talking about how like your brain always like is predicting in advance things yeah and like your attention is basically a function of like when something when something is breaks that prediction like i mean it's a classic open loop thing but like you you will literally stand to attention if it breaks your um your uh, expectations but i find it interesting for example somebody does a clap in a social area you might not look Okay, but if somebody, yeah. if there's a big explosion noise, you will always look because a clap, you kind of come to a level of agreement that that is a kind yeah, of expectation yeah, yeah. you could have. But a boom is like a proper. And I was sat, I think it was at Nice, right, at the top of the castle, and they have a every day at midday they shoot out a cannonball, uh, and it's fucking so, loud. Okay, so you fucking jumped. I'm I jumped the shit. Every, <laughs> no, but everybody did. Okay, okay. everybody did. Yeah, yeah. And what I mean by that is like there are some levels where it's such a big break yeah. that you like you literally biologically. That I don't think anybody, not even a fucking monk who's meditated for years, yeah. could bypass. Actually, maybe they could. Actually, maybe that's the whole point of Zen Buddhism. You know how they're like always silent and like they train themselves so much to ignore everything. But anyway, <laughs> besides the point, everybody had the same response, and I found that quite interesting. Yeah, it it is interesting. Like everyone, everyone's got the same sort of programming. Really, at the mm-hmm. end of the day, you know, like I remember when I went to Turkey and they play the prayer three times a day, and the first day you're like what like you know you you don't know when they're gonna play it they still play yeah. it but then like after you know two days you just know that it's happening so it's like then being programmed as a pattern if it started to go off every half an hour then you would jump back to attention again um yeah it is it is, and exactly what you were saying earlier on in terms of like our school friends doing things new it's like that is it jumps to our attention and it's like we've already given them a category, and yet now they don't fit into that category. You have to change that category mm-hmm. to apply to, you know. Um, and I guess it gets our attention as well because, of yeah. course, like it's not what we expected. For example, exactly, um, which makes a lot of sense in terms of like well, yeah. people changing their game. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah. I so now going on to like how do you design your game? I think this was quite interesting because she had like four steps. So. Mm. Um, so she, the first step is you you got to decide your game's objective. So that refers to what you're pursuing. Yeah. Then you got to decide how you're going to play a game and what kind of moves you're going to make. So I assume that in in her sense was like um, how you're going to do it. So you're going to like reach to this level of your company where you now work three days a week. And yeah. how you're going to get there? You got to do this, this, and this. Like actual plan planned out. Yeah. And then it talks about what obstacles must be overcome, including both internal and external. So internal is mindset, basically, like. Yeah how are you going to deal with the fact that other people might want you to not change or how are you going to deal with the self doubt that you're obviously going to experience when you try and change. Um, and the external challenges I would assume is also other people trying to stop you because they didn't like, <laughs> like, like what you're doing. Um, yeah. And I, I think the last one's the most important, like how to keep score to then to know that you're winning. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the most important because like I said earlier, we, we love to make progress towards things but we need to make sure we're keeping like track of the right things to make progress on. Yeah. So for example, uh, the, yeah, the example I'd use right now would be, so you could say, get more muscular. You could track your weight, but weight, okay. does correlate to muscle, like how muscular you are, but it could also correlate to, to fat. So if you were saying to yourself, I want to put on more muscle, I want to put five kg of muscle. You yeah. can't really differentiate between muscle and fat. Really? It's too yeah, hard. Yeah, unless yeah. you're doing like a BMI, like a proper scan, etc. Yeah. So you're much better off um, measuring stuff like how much is your strength improving? yeah and it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, exactly. picking the right things to measure um picking the right metric yeah so clayton christensen he wrote an interesting like essay called like how how to measure how are you going to measure your life or how to measure your life yeah and it was it was pretty much literally how to what game are you playing it was just talking about more about what do you categorize in your life or what do you define as like success in your life yeah and what are you actually keeping measure of yeah is it is it your bank account is it what your friends think of you yeah um, and the thing is, the moment you give it to external stuff, such as what your friends think of you, you then are a pawn. Yeah. Back to what we said earlier, well, you're a pawn you of seek, their game. You seek, seek validation, and gratification. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So this is why it's important to make sure you know what you're keeping track of. And it was really interesting because I read Warren Buffett's um, biography mm-hmm. um, that somebody wrote about him, and he, his dad basically ingrained into him about this internal scorecard, and it was like you have an internal scorecard of the values that you have and what you want to do and you don't listen to anybody else. You just keep yeah. ticking along that internal yeah, scorecard. Yeah. And that's literally why I bought this book right here. The score takes care of itself from Bill Walsh. Like it's all about like making sure you're keeping track of the right thing. But then like the overall life plan will take care of itself. If you track yeah. the many, the many things that matter. Yeah. 
Um, and the thing is, is this it, like it's very similar in in terms of like um, creating a habit. You know, yeah. the four steps. There's always these four steps, and it's these things get easier. You know, like the more you do it, the more it becomes ingrained. The more you don't listen, like seek external gratification, and you know, keep tracking your game and making sure that you're measuring it properly the easier it will become and the more it will almost become like automatic it will become your like natural behavior yeah um so like yeah the hardest bit the hardest bit is starting the hardest bit is realizing okay i do have this there may be more hurdles at the beginning than there will be later on but once i'm through the big hurdles then you know it's more downhill then then then, I think oh, yeah, yeah. The, the hardest part is probably one defining what you want to do yeah then two getting at it and yeah then, and the fact actually well, I mean it's easy to say but then also there is there is obstacles such as like what he said or what she's saying sorry about other people reacting to you yeah um, it's not to that none of this is meant to be easy but it's it's, it's yeah. almost I think I think the whole premise of the book is mainly to have a more fulfilling life like based on your terms and not somebody else's yeah um, and and thing is is that like a lot of this stuff can be done with bite sizes you know like small little steps it doesn't have to be you don't have to take a massive chunk the first time you Mm -hmm. don't need to go into your whole like friend circle and be like this is me if you don't accept it that it's you know you can like it doesn't have to be like that all straight away um of course Uh, it really depends on what what the game is and it also depends on if it's in professional or in your uh personal life because you can take many steps, like you said. For example, let's say you want more freedom in your job. You could literally go to your boss in a couple of days and be like, hey, I would really appreciate if I could, you know, if you could <laughs> not yeah. micromanage me. Maybe you, you would definitely not go in like that because that's just, <laughs> first of all, you're putting yeah. blame on them and that's just never a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, But, you know, you can take steps almost immediately, but you need to know what you want first. There's always yeah. like, you need to know the why or the what before you can sort of do the how. Yeah, exactly. Um, the how comes after. Exactly and what else questions to reflect um okay that's quite interesting these ones because we we love a few questions don't we we do so, uh so like this ask yourself if you're if you're what you are pursuing is is based on what you've been told or based on what you've assumed that people want of you so basically uh, what ask yourself if what if the thing that you want the most is it because you actually want it or is it because you know somebody's told you to want it or you assume that people want you to want it. Mm. I think that quite the, the assuming that people want you to want it is kind of like a parent thing. I would assume where you assume that your parents yeah. really want you to be a doctor. Oh, you should be a doctor so, or a lawyer. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. Something that's respected, right? But that's also yeah. by the way another game that's fucking stupid. Yeah. Anyway, um, I like this. How are you currently keeping score? I mean, I, I I like to think that we're all keeping score of something, and it and it can it can be professional, it can be personal. So for some people yeah. might keep track of their. The amount of t- amount of interest they get from other people, if it like in sexually, some people like that's you know that people are actually yeah. actively keeping score of different things. Like I was just yeah. thinking, it's like some people don't care about their job; they care more about how many partners they can have. Some people don't yeah. care about. Some people care more about having one partner and just focusing on other things. Yeah. Um, people. Some people care about having lots of money. Some people care about helping people. But like this, yeah. is what I mean, they and they, I would I guarantee you, if you went into their brains, they'd all be looking at these situations differently, and they'll be keeping score of different things. I wonder if that's why like money is such a big um, game or the most like well like because it's easiest to track big, right because it's the easiest to track exactly. yeah yeah no I think I think you're on something to it's honest. like whenever yeah. whenever people talk about habits or like habit books or whatever it always goes to the gym because the gym is very easy it's like oh I put on you know two kilos stronger this you know and I can do twelve reps it's very easy to measure by the way you're you're, the way, you're completely right the easier it is to measure the more likely it is to be like um pursued like you just said in terms like some people measure like helping uh, whether they help people or not but it's quite a hard metric it's like unless you have a metric there like how can you measure whether uh, but, someone... the, but isn't it but isn't that why charities kind of like go like 500 kids saved or Ex- exactly exactly but it gives the illusion of growth doesn't it it's like oh, it's the illusion you... of progress yeah I, I remember you talking about the um oh, I've read this many books, but it doesn't mean you know the books. Mm, you know, also, it's like, it gives you the illusion that like, oh, well, I've read 50 books, so it means that uh, I've done this. But and I, th- reality, I think the, the, the most humbling part is what happens if all the books are based on false assumptions from the yeah, start. Exactly. Everything you've just digested is wrong. Exactly. Um, which a lot of them are, by the way, from what I can understand now, if I take like a scientific lens to most of them, it's just anecdotal. It's like, oh, this one story. Okay. So yeah. what does that mean? Is 100% true the whole time? Yeah, my yeah exactly. It's um, such a generalization. 
it happens all the time, but that's the way we have to think. But um, you have to be skeptical. Yeah, sorry, we've gone off the track of like keeping score. I think the score thing is so interesting because it also talked about like what you measure, what you measure gets managed is like Pete. Uh, what, get me- what gets measured gets managed. That's it by Peter Drucker. But it's almost I remember hearing it as well as like human nature to game game scores. Mm. So the moment, for example, let's say it was a sales team and your score to get this month is five thousand sales, you could promise the world to get to that like five thousand sales. It's not the obsession with getting five thousand sales means you get there anyway. That means like anyway necessary. It doesn't mean they're good sales if you kind of get me. Yeah. And I, it, what was it? It was Gandhi Grove, who's the Intel CEO. It was paired measures, and he talks about how you can try and pair quantity with quality. So not only do they have a quantity measurement, so like let's say make five thousand sales, but quality based on like how what have you promised them and how long do they stay on kind of thing and uh, if you don't okay. if you don't have paired measures you're asking for trouble because people well, yeah. will just game it um and i thought that was a really interesting insight like you should always have a countermeasure would that lead into like the single perspective then because if you only had like one way of measuring things rather than your dual like you were just talking about yeah you should if you measure things through one way people will find a way to make sure that measurement gets boosted if it's a target um like yeah you you need a you need a secondary measure or you need something other test yeah yeah hundred percent. Now it's more about like so it's what you keep your score of um how well is your objective aligned to how you play your game, um are you are you keeping score of the things that matter the most to you I think that's quite interesting. Um, most yeah. people like you, oh, to be honest, it's just so hard to actually the more I think about this the more it's hard to not have money involved in some of this because like for example something can matter the world to you but if you're not paying your mortgage every month um you're in trouble it's going to take priority yeah um i think this is yeah it's a bit more for like actually exploring your options and trying to create a reality where you're more happy yeah um absolutely um and to be honest for me mate that's pretty much the, the whole book i don't i don't really know how much more i can say about it yeah no i think that's i think that's pretty much it to be honest um i think yeah, I, I think the one thing I'd encourage anybody who's if they've listened this far is to actually just go back and evaluate sort of what game you are playing or thinking about what actually matters most to you. Yeah. Um, what are you keeping track of? Uh, and remember that everybody is keeping track of different things. So comparing yourself to somebody else is actually pretty pretty shit because they're actually keeping track of something else. Like yeah. you might be thinking, oh wow, that guy's got a lot of money, whereas he's probably you could even be just like really enjoying his life, you know, but he's made a load yeah. of money off the side of it and he doesn't actually care um yeah 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 and i think like another point is like even if you don't know what you want to do yet or like your the thing that you're interested in isn't like really ingrained and you're not sure if you really like it just test the waters with it you know try it somewhere try it do a course in it or something like that something that like it either piques your interest more or you realize actually no that's not something that i want to do and then you try something else you know It, it you don't have to start by like giving up your job and suddenly making a drastic change. Just like test the waters and see how it feels. For sure. You only find out what game you want to play by playing multiple and then, you know, then defining what it is that you enjoy the most and going after it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that like drop is it. Yeah. That's a wrap. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you did, make sure you leave a comment or a review. And if you want to know more about what we do or you want to read any of our book summaries, head on over to wisewords.blog. And if you feel like staying wise throughout the week, why not follow us on Instagram at wisewordsummaries? I guarantee you'll love what you see. Anyway, guys, until next time, have a good one.